Hey everybody, welcome back. And I uh, wanted to bring you a Ark of Osiris uh, guide. And it's not just a guide for the Ark, but I've gotten a lot of questions on how can I be a positive contributor to my alliance inside of Ark of Osiris. And it's kind of a difficult question to answer because there's different roles to be played inside of that uh, environment. Um, <laughs> that being said, I think that what we can do is I can give you some good open field suggestions. I can give you some great tips and tricks on how to positively impact your one hour event. And to be honest, I mean, we're, that's kind of where the game is at right now. We're still waiting for kingdom versus kingdom. We're still uh, kind of waiting for some of the balances to be hashed out. But the one thing that we can really go after besides mightiest governor is going to be Ark of Osiris. And that's what everybody's gearing up towards with their, um, with their commanders, with their armies, with their cities, with their civilizations, the whole thing. So that's the most fun, at least in my opinion, that can be had in the game right now. And since it's only once every three weeks, um, it's, it's easy to plan for uh, as long as you have the right direction. So that's, that's what this video is about. I want to make sure that you have everything you need to at least get an idea of what you need to be doing in the field. Uh, so that you can uh, really bring a positive impact to uh, your alliance while you're doing Ark of Osiris. So the reason I've got Richard up here, um, especially in the beginning of Ark of Osiris, you have got to be able to control the battlefield. And different troops have different roles. Obviously, cavalry are going to be your, your mobility, your speed troops. Um, they're going to be the ones to be able to get around the battlefield. And Ark of Osiris is a big map, uh, and having that mobility is very crucial, but also having the ability to kind of hold a spot and make that spot yours is a big deal. And if you don't have an infantry army, uh, at least one, <laughs> that you're contributing to the, to the cause, that's a big deficit for your alliance. So what I would recommend is, it, first and foremost, get a really solid infantry group going and the way to do that is with uh, obviously having infantry as, as high as possible your training your research your alliance research but also your troop count so you want to have at least 200,000 infantry come into the battlefield t4 um, but then your commanders so there's a couple different commanders that you can bring to the table obviously there's different levels of what you're going to be able to bring depending on your server uh, some servers have Richard some don't some servers uh, have a lot of pay to win, some of them don't. So uh, there's a big range uh, between what can be brought to the table for each individual person. So I'm gonna go quickly through each one just so you have an idea of what uh, you can use to bring a solid contributing infantry group to the field. And again, I think the first criteria is to make sure that you've got 200,000 T4 troops um, to bring into the field at one time. It needs to be all in one group. It can't be two 100,000 groups of infantry. It's just not, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have any staying power with that size of an army. And really anything above that is gravy. Once you get into folks that are um, higher tier, 20 million plus power, you're gonna need 250,000 plus because uh, you're gonna be using a 50% uh, army capacity buff with your, your infantry groups and a lot of people now are up to 300,000 plus. So just kind of keep that in mind. The more troops that you bring per army to the table, the more effective you're going to be. It's just plain and simple. It's a numbers game. So with that being said, let's go through some infantry combinations and commanders that you can bring to the battlefield. And uh, again, this is really flexible depending on who um, who you are and, and where you're at in the game, uh, how much money you have to put into the game, if any. Uh, it just depends. So one thing I really would recommend whenever you're talking about infantry commanders, if you have Richard, get Richard. And and I put almost every single Universal Sculpture I've gotten since I joined the kingdom, which was almost 90 days ago, into Richard. And as you can see, I've got him 5345, and that's winning maybe one or two of the, the Universal Sculpture events. Everything else has been through recharge events, through the Valentine's Day uh, celebration that we just did, all the holiday ones where you get 20, 30, 40, 50 universal sculptures, every single one of those I've put into Richard. So I'm only three skill points away or whatever you want to call it, but that's about 200 and, 240, 230 sculptures. So I'm still a ways off, 
but I'm hoping uh, to find that stuff um, as quickly as possible, somehow, some way. Once you unlock that expertise, uh, that's going to be very helpful on the battlefield. Slowing down the, the target march speed is going to be very effective on Archive Osiris, because really, one of the main things uh, on Archive Osiris is mobility. Even on an infantry group, having mobility to slow down those cavalry units that may be coming in, or slow down the archer units that are trying to flank you because they think they're going to they're going to beat you. Being infantry, they're not. Just <laughs> it's not going to happen, uh, especially if you've got a Richard in your group. You, you're going to tank uh, so much uh, on the battlefield. So uh, let's go into some pairings. Obviously, Richard and Charles are going to be your your best in slot. So Richard and Charles can be primary or secondary. It doesn't matter. The, all the skills still apply, and they all have the same uh, tree: infantry, garrison, and defense. So um, what I recommend is. Uh, especially if you if you have the ability to to XP up both commanders is do one for full infantry infantry tree which is like this and then spec into defense to get testudo formation which is definitely the way to go I would also go over and get uh, some of these other ones here reducing your damage uh, the heal, heal one's not that big of a deal I also need to get the march speed uh, here as well that's my next three points where that's going into but I would spec into March Speed and then also get, uh, I want to say I can get to Loose Formation, but I'm not 100% on that. But you want to you wanna have your primary commander be on Infantry Full, especially if you can bring full infantry in that army, and then spec into Defense as your secondary tree. Now on the other commander, uh, and this is applicable across the board, um, especially if you need a garrison commander, I would just put the secondary uh, infantry commander that you're going to have in your main infantry army as your garrison. Now I haven't done that on this one yet because I didn't know who I was going to be leveling up first as far as sculptures that were coming in so I've got him specced into infantry as well. It's not necessary. I would go into to garrison once I get him leveled up with some more XP and make him my primary um, garrison commander and then have Richard be my backup. That's going to be your best in slot for garrison command as well. Um, but I would also spec uh, into garrison and defense versus garrison and infantry because you're going to have mixed troops in your city. But best in slot in the field, Richard and Charles, either order, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you have full infantry tree and then spec secondary into defense. Now, um, that's obviously going to be pay to win or at least paying a decent chunk to get all those sculptures because you're going to need... Uh, what is it, 1,250 roughly, or almost 1,300 um, legendary sculptures to get both of these guys maxed out. That's a big chunk of legendary sculptures. That's very difficult. Now, the, the cool thing is, on some kingdoms, the daily, on my kingdoms, uh, this, is, this is the case, uh, the daily chests that you can purchase give you a chance to get Charles Martel um, sculptures. So that's been helpful. And then also, uh, you know, when you're talking about Mightiest Governor, Charles is also part of the Mightiest Governor. So if you want to wait and save up your resources and your, your speed ups, um, and, so, you know, definitely when you're talking about killing uh, on the kill event in the last two days and spending your resources to heal you know, troops up, that's what I would do to get Charles Martel sculpture. And that's why I'm not putting any of my universal sculptures into Charles because I can get him. It's just going to take some time. Whereas Richard... It's all about luck, you know, whether it comes to um, getting him out of the tavern with gold keys or, uh, again, just using universal sculptures. That's really the only way. Uh, or the wheel event. That's th Those are the ways that you can get him. Otherwise, it's very difficult to get him. So that's where I've plugged off. And plus, he's like the most, <laughs> let's be honest, he's the most, uh, one of the most powerful commanders in the game. That's why people are frustrated if they don't have him. Um, so best in slot, infantry right there. Now, People keep asking me, who do I pair Sun Tzu with as an infantry commander? You can. I mean, it's not like you can't do it. He does have a health bonus of 10% to infantry, and he does have the infantry uh, talent skill or talent path. But he's not really an infantry commander. He's geared around uh, AOE skill-based nuke damage. Every other, with the exception of the garrison talent, everything else is geared around skill damage. So he, he should be spec'd out. In full, uh, in full skill damage talent tree, and then you can work over to the other rage generation ones. So I wouldn't really bring him in as an infantry commander. I wouldn't pair him up unless you absolutely had nothing else to bring 
with another infantry commander and say, hey, I've got a, I've got an infantry pair. Um, you don't. It, I would say m maybe with a Yulji, uh, for instance, that could work because they synergize together with both being a skill-based um, type of commander. And I would have Sun Tzu as primary, so you could have full infantry tree and then go into uh, the skill path and go over to Rejuvenate. That's probably about as far as you're going to be able to get maybe a few of these other ones over here that you'll be able to take, but you won't be able to go all the way down into Clarity and certainly not Feral Nature, which is a big, big benefit to you uh, when you're a skill damage uh, character. So uh, that would be the only pairing I would I would recommend with Sun Tzu if you're doing an infantry group is Yulji, but that's not going to be what you need in the battlefield to be tanky. And that's, that's what I'm talking about here in this video is being able to take an army and just send them across the map and then you could sit there and go do other things coordinate the rest of your armies coordinate your alliance and not really have to worry too much i mean obviously if 20 armies swarm your guy he's not going to survive but um you can basically leave him or send him off to an altar or a shrine and not really worry too much about it um you can you can do that and they're tanky enough to where if you if you skip them for 20 or 30 seconds and you jump to them and they're getting hit, you can just get away. So, I mean, it's not a huge deal. So, Sun Tzu's out for that purpose. Again, Richard and Charles are definitely top-notch, best in slot. Then we start getting into the epic slash legendary commanders. So, um, obviously, Yulji comes to mind here. Um, this is a good free-to-play infantry commander because they've got he's got the infantry attack and defense bonus skill here. And then his expertise boosts that even further. Uh, now, he does have nuke uh, up front, but the defense uh, decrease is beneficial for a full infantry army because a lot of your damage is going to be coming from your troops. Uh, being a epic commander, the nuke isn't going to be that good. It's just extra damage. I, I really would say, when you're looking at Yulji, this is an infantry troop commander. Um, and again, the fourth skill being a really, really good return where it uh, increases it, your troop damage by 100% whenever it's maxed out, um, which this is one of my next, uh, one of my next uh, epic commanders that I'm going to be leveling up. Um, but this is really just extra damage. Really what you're getting from this skill that's really beneficial to the whole army is the 30% defense reduction, which is huge. That's basically a 30% attack bonus if you think about it. And if you're going up against another defensive character or another defensive army, that 30% goes farther because the defense number is higher, hence the percentage will be higher. So if you kind of think about it that way, you want to go up against the tanky ones. You want to go up against the, the Scipio tanks, the uh, certainly the Charles Martel and the, the Richard groups. This is something that might be beneficial for you to have. So who do we pair with Yulji? Um, there's a couple different things. We already talked about Sun Tzu, but again, not for this purpose. This purpose is meant to be able to have a really solid infantry group that you don't have to worry about too much as far as just getting instantly nuked down. Um, so I would pair Yulji with a Scipio. Uh, Scipio is second in command, and the reason I say that is because Scipio doesn't have the infantry tree. So he's got leadership and attack, whereas Yulji has uh, infantry and attack. And the attack talent tree is not too bad. You look over here at martial mastery, increasing normal attack damage by 6%, uh, decreasing active skill damage by, by 3%. I mean, that's not that big of a deal for a 750 damage factor nuke. And Scipio doesn't have a direct damage factor, so this would work really well with uh, Scipio being second in command. And then same thing with fight to the death. Really, really good. I know you get a little extra damage taken, but... You can take that as a as a an infantry group that's specced around defense and specced around damage output. Uh, effortless is definitely your primary where you want to go, um, and you want to also get you know these these groups are going to be in battles for a long time, so effortless is going to stack up very well. Uh, definitely the rage regeneration is good, so you can keep plugging away on those uh, Scipio rebuffs and uh, debuffing the enemy with Yulji's nuke as well. So. I think that's probably your best free to free to play best in slot is Yulji with Scipio, and then again, even as free to play, you can combine that. So you can get your primary. I would recommend making your primary the epic because it's it's easier to level up, and the levels is where the key is. It's not so much the skills. I mean, the skills are definitely important, 
but I would much rather have a level 60 commander with 5, 4, 3, 2 or something versus a level 40 commander with maxed out skills as my primary commander because the talents are what make uh, the groups that much more beneficial. The, especially on the infantry tree, you get really buffed if you're bringing in just full infantry. The buffs that you get here versus a generic attack tree are much higher, much higher. So for instance, like um, here you go, increases counterattack damage by a half percent. So maxed out with three points, that's one and a half percent. Whereas something like, where are we at? Yeah, here we go. Iron Spear. Infantry, infantry, infantry units led by this commander deal an additional 9% for the same three points to caval uh, cavalry. Same thing with uh, Fleet of Foot. 6% for Fleet of Foot. That would be a 3% or you know something like that on a generic tree. So you just get more value for your points when you spec into something specifically versus going to a generic attack tree. That's just the way it is. Uh, some other things that you could do... Um, for infantry, see that's the that's the thing. There's not many infantry commanders in the gr in the game right now. The last patch was really the patch for uh, cavalry, um, so that's why there's so many uh, cavalry armies out there because there's so many more cavalry commanders out there, uh, and that's why people are trying to <laughs> figure out what to do with Sun Tzu because he's an infantry commander, but he's really a nuking commander. So I mean, those are really your two primary best in slots one for pay to uh, pay to win or somebody who's spending some money into the game doesn't have to be a whale or anything to get a decent group going as long as you've got the first skill of richard and the first skill of charles up you're going to be effective now as you go in you're going to be that much more effective and charles's expertise is it can't be understated you're getting 20 percent higher march speed that, that and Arc of Osiris is hands down one of the best skills in the game because there, you cannot discount the effectiveness of having March Speed. Not just getting around and moving around the map that's really big, but being able to engage and disengage and being able to maneuver your army strategically. That's, that's really what it's about, is being strategic with where you place your assets and being able to maneuver as you see different things happening across the battlefield. Um, so again... Richard, Charles, Charles, Richard, either way, whichever one's higher, that's one you want as, as primary. And then Yulji and Scipio as your secondary. And you could put Osman in there as another one, but um, there's no real troop benefit with the exception of the fourth skill. Now, this is a, a caveat because, I mean, again, like I said earlier, the more troops you bring into the battle, the more effective you're going to be. So if you bring a Yulji and an Osman, or even an Osman and a Scipio, again, you're going to be in really good shape. The problem is with bringing Osman and Scipio is you lose the infantry tree. And that can't be understated. I really think that if you had uh, to use Osman, I would use Osman with Yulji. And again, I would uh, use Yulji as the primary because he's got the infantry talent tree. So Yulji, primary, Osman, secondary. But that, to me... And I haven't done the testing, so don't don't bank on this. I, I do want to do some of the testing once I get. I've got I've got 423 uh, sculptures to use, so I want to get some of these guys ranked up and do some testing. But I feel like Yulji Scipio should outperform Yulji Osman. The only thing is maybe with the extra 10% troop capacity, which would be maybe an extra 17 17,500 without a buff. With a buff, it's about 25,000 extra troops. That could be the difference um, between between the um, the two groups. So some testing to be done there. But I think overall, again, Richard, Charles, best in slot. Uh, Scipio and Yulji with Yulji primary, best in slot for free to play. And again, you can incorporate both in there. You can have Yulji and Charles. You can have Yulji and Richard. You can have... Um, Richard and Scipio, you can have Charles and Scipio, although I don't think that's as good of a combination. And again, you can toss Osman into that free-to-play arena because uh, of the troop capacity. And he does do really good nuke damage with the additional nuke damage uh, buff as well, which is really good. So um, I think that, that'll be about it. I'll wrap it up there. A quick 20-minute infantry guide. Again, strategically for infantry, I really think the best thing that you can do with your infantry group is to be at the front, 
really taking the the brunt of the damage so that your cavalry group on the back side can be capturing the the points like the shrines the altars the obelisks and you can be rallying other items across the battlefield with those cavalry so that you can be speedy and you can attack more quickly than if you were to do it with an infantry group that's a lot slower it's noticeably slower versus uh you know infantry versus cavalry it's just noticeably slower i mean i i attack people um with my infantry group uh, against a cavalry group and they just run because they know they can't win and they know that i can't catch them unless i tag them once uh and and drop their march speed with um with richard's uh special skill that decreases march speed they're going to be able to run away uh so i i need i need that and then having your cavalry group on the side to be able to chase those guys down wouldn't be a bad idea either i did want to show you a quick picture of kind of what i'm i'm talking about this was during our last ark of osiris event i was by myself um up front in this section so ronnie was in another section i think this is where he when he was over at the other uh, obelisk basically zeroing the cities to get them back to their main base which is unfortunate for them but um this is me by myself with uh, a richard charles army and again my my richard and charles are not maxed now i do have a lot of troops so i started this out with 265,000 troop capacity um they didn't attack me when i was full though i think i was only at like 180 or 190,000 at the time because i'd already been tanking two or three other armies um but all of these folks died <laughs> they did not get me into the red uh so that's how powerful and of course there's some mixed troops here there's i mean this at this point in the game we were beating them pretty handily so they were just sending what they had um so i mean I, i'm not saying that this was a uh you know wasting group here this was a group that was cobbled together a little bit but they were a lot bigger when they hit me because they were all full um when they started hitting me and i was a, a little over half maybe 60 percent. but i took a screenshot of it because i thought it was funny during the battle they were all just lowering their meters around me that's all they were doing and that's what i'm talking about you can put your infantry group in the front tank a lot of effort from the opposing side which frees up the rest of your alliance to capture those points and on the top right on the map you can see they had about five points left um, doing stuff like this gets them the opportunity to take those other points and that's really the key here you need to occupy as much of their army and their time as possible so that the rest of your alliance can go and take uh, the other points. And that's what I meant by there's different roles inside of Ark of Osiris. So I hope this was helpful. Um, you know, again, we're kind of all over the place and I restated things about four different times, but it's very important. And there's not a whole lot of options for infantry. So I wanted to talk about it. Um, it is very important. It's one of the most important armies on the field. They're slow, they're plodding along, but dang, if they're not just completely tanky, and they do a lot of work. They do the they do the in the trenches work. That's the unrewarded um, side of the the Ark of Osiris that you don't see is you, you you see all these infantry groups go up front and they're just they're tanking armies and they're attacking and making people run and and smashing them back to their cities. You just don't see that very often because everybody's all into the cavalry and um, wanting to max out Minamoto and all that good stuff. And I'll make another video on the cavalry guide coming up next, but. Uh, this is a really good guide, I hope, for you to understand what you need to do to bring a really solid infantry group to the battlefield in Ark of Osiris. And it also applies to open field, but really for Ark of Osiris, just for the mobility piece. Um, like and subscribe if you like this. Uh, again, I'm going to be bringing more content to the field here very shortly. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.